Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk about uh, the latest uh, situation with Superstorm Irma, which is uh, ravaging southern Florida at the moment. And uh, one of the things I want to make clear in this video is why so many tornadoes are being generated from this uh, superstorm. These tornadoes appear in a certain location, they're in the forward right quadrant. So as the tornado is moving forward, on the right hand side, there is, is where there's some loads of tornadoes and I'll explain why in this video. So this is my uh, Twitter handle, Paul a, at Paul H. Beckwith. Okay, so please uh, follow me if you wanna know, uh, get up to date on the storm or climate or extreme weather or renewable energy or any of these uh, sometimes chess, any of these different things. Okay, this is my last video that I did uh, talking about how you can track uh, Irma. Um, and basically what I've done is just recently I've uploaded, a few minutes ago, there's an app on my iPhone, it's called Radar Scope. And uh, I don't know what it, what the going rate is for it, it's like five bucks or something, and then if you want the Radar Scope Pro, you pay about another 10 bucks. And uh, it's a great app for any smartphone. Um, and what you can do is, so this is a normal image that you're familiar with. Um, okay, so this was just uploaded very recently. It's from a radar station, I believe on uh, the Florida Keys. Okay, um, and this is the image. You can see the cutoff here, so there, it's a circular image. So you can see the storm, you can clearly see the eye in here, which features to measure the diameter, etc. So here's Key West here. Know, and then Miami is up here so you can see a movie you can see the time it refreshes it's, so it goes um, it starts at 9 13 p.m. today Eastern day Eastern daylight time going to 9 34 so each uh, cycle through is let's see what 13 15 17 19 so every two minutes it shows you the motion of the storm and what I can do is there's a lot of different things I can examine with the storm. This is an image from earlier, two hours earlier. Okay, so you can see um, how much further the storm is away. And you see all of these bands. So this is just a typical radar image. So where you see the yellows, there's a very large echo from the a reflection. So basically the radar sends out an electromagnetic signal and uh, it bounces, it detects the water in the atmosphere. So it's detecting the, the water droplets in the clouds and the rainfall and so on. Red is most intense, then yellow down to the greens and then the blues. So you can clearly see the rotation. These images here show the direction of the motion of the storm in, uh, I believe that's 10 or 15 minute increments between the notches. This is where there's tornado warnings here and here um, in this particular image. Um, you can go back earlier. This is another image um, when the eye, this is from 2.51 um, this afternoon, so about five hours previous to that one. This is all on my Twitter, um, Twitter uh, page, Twitter feed. Okay, so you can clearly see these bands where the clouds are, and I'll explain again why those bands appear. And uh, this is interesting. There was a hurricane that came right up here Labor Day, 1935, okay, Irma is eerily looking like this path. So this is some um, information from 1935 and it shows you the path of the storm coming up here. Um, so there's all kinds of different stuff uh, that you can uh, follow. Um, and what this is, is I then on radar scope, I selected, okay, so this is super res reflectivity. This is just the reflectivity. Tilt one is the tilt of the radar. So you, you can vary the tilt, and then that lets you see further higher up. So the radar comes out at a certain angle, at a whole bunch of different angles, and you can examine the, the echo coming back at various angles. So you can get different um, cross sections through the storm with the tilt. But super, it's just a reflectivity signal. This is Doppler radar. So uh, this is uh, super res velocity. Dot. So this is what this is, is this Doppler radar, like at an airport, the difference with Doppler radar is, is it tells you also what direction the uh, wind is moving or what direction the storm is moving relative to where the uh, radar uh, unit is. So in this case, 
we know that the we know that the storm is moving this way. So in this case, the green color means that the velocity of the winds in that situation is moving away from where the radar unit is. So if this is the radar unit here, um, then what you can see is, or actually this is the eye of the storm here. Okay, the radar will be somewhere up here. Okay, so this is moving towards the radar unit is green and moving here, the red has components away from the radar unit. Okay, so it tells you, this is the Doppler radar at airports because you don't want wind shear. If the wind suddenly changes direction, wind shear, all wind shear is, is this wind going one way at one altitude, another way at another altitude, even the opposite. So if a plane's coming into land, it wants to land in against the headwind. Wind's coming this way, the plane has more lift. If suddenly it descends and then now there's shear and the wind's going this way, the plane will drop suddenly. There was a lot of accidents with that. Doppler radars at airports prevent that because you can now detect that shift. Also, you can detect uh, very clearly how much space you need to leave between aircraft, for example, because the turbulence behind an aircraft is, you know, extends for many, many miles, many, many minutes even, and that sets the limit on how close planes can land, um, you know, the, the, the gap. Okay, so radar scope, very, very inexpensive, might cost you 15 bucks or something. Um, the Pro allows you to see lightning, etc. And, uh, you, you know, it's for if you're storm chasing or something, it's vital. I mean, I just, it's the best app. Uh, I use it all the time on my phone. Um, you know, you can do real time weather forecasting yourself. You know, you can see if the storm's coming by, you can estimate from the speed of the storm, play the movie, and you know, okay, it's going to rain right over my head in about 12 minutes. And, you know, 12 plus or minus a couple of minutes and it starts raining and you can tell the intensity of the rain, etc. So, you know, you go on a picnic somewhere, you know, uh, you're farming, you, you whatever, hiking, you know exactly what's going on um, with this app. Okay, so um, why do you get those bands? Well, this is the cross section of the storm. The eye is here. So whenever you have storms, you have low pressure in the center. Okay, it's called a cyclone is a general term for low pressure in the northern hemisphere. Okay, uh, what happens is because it's low here and high out here, air coming in deflects to the right in the northern hemisphere. So the storm is rotating this way. Okay, now down here you get down drafts and, and no wind in the center of the eye. Here you get up drafts, you get heavy convection and you get the cloud formation. So the precipitation is underneath these bands and then here you get the downdraft again, you get the updraft, downdraft, updraft. So you get these bands. So that's what you're seeing on the radar, um, these different bands. Um, now, this is the eye wall here. The eye wall are the clouds that are the convective rising around the eye or the eye walls. And if the storm is going into the board away from us, then you will, because it's rotating this way, Right here, you need to add the rotation speed to the forward speed. Right here, the winds relative to the ground are the rotation speed minus the forward speed, which I explained a bit in the last video. So the winds here, this is where the winds are most ferocious here in the right front quadrant. Okay, so um, what we can do is go down here. So this is now a cross section with the updraft regions, the downdraft. There's no rain in the downdraft because it's air descending. As it descends, it warms up, it's colder air, loses, cold air doesn't hold as much moisture, so there's less moisture here. As it descends, it warms up and it's very dry air, okay? And then the up, you get the evaporation, you get the convective uplift, the clouds forming, and the rain in these bands, okay? This is the air pressure, okay? Uh, dropping down to the minimum here. The lower the, 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 the lower the air pressure, the stronger the storm. And here is where the wind speed, this is the surface wind speeds, and uh, it peaks in the eye wall. Now, because the storm is going forward, this isn't showing that effect. This is like if the storm is stationary, it actually, moving forward, it'll bump, it bumps this up where the winds are highest and it bumps that down. Okay, I've got a 3D image here. This was Andrew in 1992, August 23rd, and this is sort of a 3D image and you can see the, the winds, and you can see the bands, and you can see the motions, etc. This is going right up to the top of the uh, lower atmosphere, the tropopause. Could be 11 kilometers. Actually, we're, getting, we're not that far from the equator, so it could even be like 15 kilometers high. Okay, these bands. 
Okay, now this is a tornado. Okay, you get a very low pressure in the center, very high winds. Okay, you might have a kilometer or a mile or mile and a half diameter. Okay, um, so what happens? Well, when the, hur the hurricane here, this is a hurricane moving this way. These are the four quadrants of the hurricane looking down. So this is the front, this is the front quadrant, it's the back quadrant, it's the front right quadrant. And each of these spots, this indicates, each of the red spots, dots, indicates the greatest frequency of tornadoes within the hurricane. So if you take a whole bunch of hurricanes and you look at where the tornadoes occur relative to the circular image of the hurricane, the red spots are where you get the highest number of, of tornadoes spinning off in the hurricane. So you can see right quadrant loaded, and there's some back here, and there's some interestingly in this quadrant that are kicked off in this quadrant. Um, this is uh, the center, the eye, and this is about 300 nautical miles. So a long way from the tornado. It's just that the wind speed is the highest, the frequency of occurrence of tornadoes is the greatest. Now, again, the best way to follow this, if you don't have a Twitter account, just create a Twitter account. Uh, you don't have to follow anybody or do anything, and then you just put hashtag Irma, search for it. And uh, there, basically, here's you get all of the information real time on the storm. You can do the top stories and you can do the latest stories, okay? So the top stories are the ones with the most likes and, and retweets, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, this is the latest, okay? Um, since I up, this is 28 minutes ago. And since then, there's been over a thousand posts to this hash, using this hashtag. So you can get all kinds of different stuff here. Okay, you can just uh, up, refresh your browser and you get all this stuff. I don't know if I should have done that because it seems like it's not um, responding now. Okay, so this is, well, there we go. Okay, 29 seconds. Uh, Lady Gaga, I don't know, people, what's that got to do with Burma, right? I don't know, people are, you know, people want their tweets to go so they put some stuff in there with Irma because they know Irma is trending right now. So here, here we go, category three storm and so on. There's all kinds of stuff here on the latest tracks, the latest models, stuff like that. Now, um, in Facebook, I posted uh, some other, my Facebook page is open to all. You can just find me, Paul Beckwith. Um, I should call some of the friends that never post anything and stuff to make room for people that are really interested. But this is uh, the right front quadrant, for example. Um, right here is a tornado warning. So the storm's coming up in here, tornado warning. And this is a Doppler radar. And you can see red is one direction. Green is another direction. You can see where the lightning strikes are. It's in this region when you have a strong velocity couplet. So very, very close, very, very, in a very small area, you see winds going one way and winds going the other way. This is rotation from a tornado. Um, I don't know, maybe a tornado will develop here, but there's a warning here, okay? Um, I also posted um, a lot of other images here. So this was when the storm was coming in. Um, 8.3 miles in the eye. Okay, um, I took that image from radar scope. This is some of the tornado warnings here, and this is the this is the uh, reflectivity. This is the Doppler radar. Here you could have a couplet, right? Red and green close to each other. Velocity couplet could be a tornado. Right here, red and green close together could be a tornado, right? Um, this is the eye from a satellite image, which I just pulled off the uh, web. This is the t storm total accumulation. So you can get the total accumulation of precipitation. I think the red was about three or four inches already. Okay, you can see this is a high precipitation. So this is again all radar scope. I can get total precipitation. And this is the enhanced echo top. So it's the, it's, it, it, there's some signal processing enhancement and it clearly shows the tops of the clouds, for example. And this is one hour rainfall amounts and the scale you just click down here to get to read off the scale. So there's lots of image. Vertically integrated liquid, if you go from the surface up, how much uh, precipitation, how much liquid is there? Okay, um, now why, now here's the uh, Earth Null School and you can play it forward and see where, where this guy is gonna go. Okay, uh, maybe or not, computer's a bit slow. Okay, and the National Hurricane Center, NHC NOAA, is where you can see, get the latest uh, details and get the trajectories and stuff. Thank you.